Thank you, ladies, smiled Derek. He quickly tried to shunt the trucks of jazz mags out of their sight when... Shh, shh. Can you hear something? The twins strained their ears, or they would have if they had them, and listened. Far away, but getting louder and louder, was the sound of... Nothing, said Emma curiously. Exactly, said Derek. And who's that engine rolling towards us 15 minutes late as usual? Pip, in front, squinted into the distance. It looks like stuck up, she mused. And it ought to be stuck up. But stuck up's never this quiet. It was stuck up. He was rolling along at a tremendous pace. He didn't look at Derek, and he didn't look at the twins. He whooshed straight through the station in utter silence and disappeared. Well, said Pip and Emma together. It's very wrong, chuckled Derek, but we just do it. And he explained to them what Stuck Up had said. <sighs> Let us explain. Like all the diesels on the other railway, old Stuck Up's horn is partly made from old vacuum cleaners. It's called economizing kits, so why at front swears by it. <coughs> anyway, it seems a particularly tipsy workman had gotten his horn stuck on suck. And Stuck Up didn't realize until he was out on the main line. The worst part was that not only was his horn mute and jammed, it was also sucking up every little sound vibration around it. <sighs> Meanwhile, old Stuck Up whooshed along the line like a large blue ghost. The silence was awful. Doorbells malfunctioned in nearby houses, air raid sirens fizzled to nothing, five fire brigades got stuck in traffic, and old ladies missed a vital plot point in a broadcast of midsummer murders. At the big fat station, everyone made rude gestures at him. The thin git made rude gestures too. There wasn't much else to do.